I just don't get what the big deal about death is, you know? Mentally, she's weird. Mr. Harmon? With his eyes. I think he's asleep. Sleepwalking is not a diagnosis, it's a symptom. It could be some sort of narcolepsy. Oh, this is getting spicy. He's sleepwalking, which we call somnambulism. Interestingly, some people with somnambulism in rare cases can actually drive a car while asleep. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 5, Episode 6, Joy, an episode recommended by our second ever channel member, Amar Begic. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House episodes, and this will be Episode 39. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. I'll call a friend when you call a friend. Bye. Come on, Samantha, you're gonna be late for school. It's 4.30. Oof, now that is an opening scene. So what can cause someone to just space out like that for hours on end without being aware of it? He must have been able to move during that time as well since he went from the kitchen to the living room. So there are two possibilities here. It could be an awareness or consciousness problem which would make me think more of an absence seizure. Or it could be a memory problem, like someone having no memory of what they did after their 14th tequila shot. He hasn't smiled as well, seems very flat. Makes me think his limbic system is affected too. Let's find out more. Guy works at home as a consumer product tester. He could have been exposed to a toxin that caused short-term memory loss. Took his home for toxins and his sinuses for thrombosis. Interesting, so he's a consumer product tester, which sounds like a brilliant job, by the way. Get paid and get free stuff? Well, maybe if the gift is short-term memory loss, it's not quite worth it. Toxic causes of memory loss and even dementia can be things like lead, mercury, aluminium, and even solvent poisoning. There've been many cases with similar symptoms after exposure to solvents. In 2013, Deshmukh and colleagues published a case report of a 29-year-old female working in a pharmaceutical company who develops neurological symptoms after exposure to methylating agents. We already know his CT was negative, so was his drug scene, which is helpful. I would definitely want to screen him for psychiatric symptoms suggesting schizophrenia and self-harm since he is very flat. Also if you're wondering what's going on with the whiteboard, Cuddy's trying to adopt a baby and seems like there's going to be an opportunity coming up in two weeks where a baby's born from a mom that she's paired with. House is taking bets on how long before the baby's birth Cuddy's actually going to back out of this whole parenting thing. Connor has gone with 7 to 14 days and House has gone with less than 7. Charming. Wow. This is no way to raise a kid. He's a single dad. I'm sure he's doing his best. Looks like mold. Mom would have cleaned better. Must be hard not having your mom around, huh? I was only four when the accident happened. Interesting, they found some mold in the house, but that is almost certainly not the cause of the symptoms. You'd expect if it were, then the points of entry would be irritated, as mold causes damage in the body by mounting an inflammatory response. Those symptoms would be things like a stuffy nose, wheeze, red or itchy eyes or skin. Asthma can get worse as well. What else it might indicate though is it could be excessive moisture in the house. Where is that coming from? Maybe dad is growing something that he shouldn't be, or their house was built on some kind of toxic waste dump that's causing their symptoms. The father and daughter seem to be spending a lot of time at home without much room for fun, and the daughter seems like a really cold girl doesn't have much feeling for her mum or desire to see others. Interestingly, Tab was talking about how single people shouldn't have children and that the modern family is a fraud, with the father spending most of their time at work to try and pay the bills, and then only gives a birthday card to try and appease their guilt for not being there. So positive. But it seems like there's a backstory there that I can't wait to hear. Interestingly though, children of single parents have been shown repeatedly to grow up and earn less, be more likely to end up in prison and use drugs by studies. Part of that may not just be the relationship though. It could be that married couples earn more and would be more likely to spend time with their children and teach them. Interestingly, we also learned here that 13's mother died when she was young and her dad did a great job. Although Taub said to her in the face that he's not too sure about that since she's quite screwed up. Modern day Casanova. I just don't get what the big deal about death is, you know? Mentally, she's weird. Mr. Harmon? His eyes. I think he's asleep. Sleepwalking is not a diagnosis, it's a symptom. It could be some sort of narcolepsy. Oh, this is getting spicy. He's sleepwalking, which we call somnambulism, type of parasomnia where a person is in a transitional state between the deepest stage of non-REM sleep and being awake 
for a long period of time. Surprisingly, people in this state can perform complex tasks like walking or eating because of an area in the spinal cord called the central pattern generator that can produce an automatic set of movements. This is an area that makes it driving a car that much easier when you've done it a hundred times compared to when you're just learning. Interestingly, some people with somnambulism in rare cases can actually drive a car while asleep. If you thought that was crazy, in 2005, a 15-year-old girl climbed a 130-foot crane while asleep, all while their consciousness wasn't there due to an inactive prefrontal cortex. It's estimated that somnambulism affects one in 25 people and it can run in families, although an inactive prefrontal cortex may be more common. Kind of mentioned narcolepsy, but that doesn't seem to be the case here, as that usually can cause sudden episodes of collapse and things like sleep paralysis, excessive nighttime dreaming and waking that doesn't quite match our patient. Here's a question for you smart people. What percentage of people have talked in their sleep? Answers down below. He's now asleep. We should stop him. His legs are working, obviously his eyes are working too. Apparently rips a coke fiend. If you snort coke while asleep, surely you would wake up. Must be related to Charlie Sheen. Interestingly, they mentioned the sex while asleep thing, although this patient wasn't having it. In 2004, there was a case of a married Australian woman who would sleepwalk and go have intercourse with absolute strangers. It happened frequently for months with no memory of the event afterwards, as she reports. After psychiatric counseling, she managed to kick the habit. Quite impressive, although I'm sure the husband didn't think so. Now, if you've managed to stay awake up and until this point then you need to know about the channel membership it gives you access to exclusive perks like suggesting what I react to next and getting early access to new videos the first 30 members are in with a chance of winning a one-on-one -on -one tutor session with me on a medical topic of your choice we've already got 10 members so make sure to secure one of those 20 spots before it's too late the earlier you join the earlier i can react to your suggestions as well so click join down below dealers cut this stuff with all kinds of garbage so get a sample it looks like pulmonary hypoplasia it's a good thing dr cutty brought you in i would like to buy some cocaine please <laughs> Definitely not a cop. Oh, it really doesn't get much better than this. Straight-laced Tab requesting cocaine from the local drug dealer. The juxtaposition is beautiful. What's less beautiful though is it seems like Baby Cuddy wasn't getting on too well. The baby has abnormally small lungs, meaning that they wouldn't be able to breathe on their own too easily. The patient is an ex-drug user, but has assured Cuddy that she hasn't used in the last seven months which is around the age of her pregnancy. She came into hospital with an abnormal rash and I've got a sneaky suspicion that she wasn't quite truthful. Cameron was saying that they now need to give steroids and delay the delivery by giving magnesium. Now that actually wouldn't work for a significant amount of time. Usually in the real world, it's used to stop contractions in threatened preterm delivery and generally it works for around 48 hours. Our patient hasn't even started contractions yet, so there's no real indication to use it at this point. Now steroids are only shown to affect outcomes within seven days of birth, so there's not much point in giving it before contractions, especially with something to delay labor. Now I wanna see what they find in this street cocaine, Frequently, it can be local anesthetic because they're cheap. They can mimic the action of cocaine by making the throat numb, as cocaine is actually a local anesthetic. Conveniently, many local anesthetics are also a white powder. I don't want the good, get the new customer hooked stuff. I want the step done, keep the old customer coming back for more stuff. Coke was cut with milk powder. Not much of a toxin. It is if he's allergic to milk. Milk powder? He was snorting milk powder. Okay, this is not lactose intolerance for the same reason why it's not mold, no respiratory symptoms. You don't absorb milk into the bloodstream and have it travel all the way to the brain without ruffling some cellular feathers along the way if you're lactose intolerant. So what is this? Maybe his subconscious is getting the cocaine while he's asleep because he craves the fun that he hasn't been getting in a while while he's been awake. What if that fun includes other things? If they didn't interrupt him when he took the coke, what would he have done afterwards? Sex? Maybe he's got syphilis? HIV or cerebral gonorrhea? Or what if he started eating some contaminated food and ended up with a cerebral parasite like toxoplasmosis? Definitely want to MRI his brain and do a lumbar puncture if it's safe to do so from the scan. I need two units of O-negative stat. 
The mother had a stage two placental abruption. She's losing blood. Deliver now, risk the baby. Deliver later, risk the mom. You can give the mom more blood. You can't give the fetus more lungs. I love the difficult moral situations that house creates. But this one is a no-brainer. The reason why is because placental abruption not only risks the mum, but also the fetus. That's because the blood the mother is losing isn't just the one you see down below. As much blood as you see coming from the vagina, there's 10 times forming a layer between the placenta and the uterine wall. That means if the baby isn't delivered soon, then it will be starved of oxygen as the placental blood supply is cut off. But Cuddy agreed with the decision to deliver and House is saying that proves she doesn't want the baby in the first place. Seems to me like House is worried about Cuddy being distracted with the baby, kind of like an older child when a little sibling is born and getting angry because they're not getting attention anymore. Sharing is caring, House. Did I fall asleep and hurt myself? You're sweating blood. Leukemia explains everything. Go do a bone marrow biopsy. I don't want to wait. No. Oh, the patient has made the decision for Cuddy. Looks like she's going to deliver, which, to be fair, is actually the right call for the mother and the child medically, as there are two options here with pulmonary hypoplasia. Either it's so severe that the lungs probably won't continue to develop much more, or it's not that severe and the child would survive at seven months anyway. At 30 weeks, the survival rate for babies generally is 90%. Pretty good odds. In terms of our patient though, they think it's lymphoma or that it's not hemorrhagic fever because he doesn't have a high white cell count. But what if on his sleep time jollies, he contracted HIV or Ebola? or another viral hemorrhagic fever like hantavirus pulmonary syndrome or hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome. That could explain the sweat in his blood and suppressed immune response. It's a pretty good theory actually. Maybe he slept with a woman of the night from West Africa and got Ebola. Maybe her name was Joy and that explains the episode title. It was also what Cuddy wanted to name her future child so hopefully she still can. Let's find out more. You been testing any tanning creams or sprays? No. It's not a tan. It means it's not leukemia. Chem panel confirms kidney failure and stage. Tested for vasculitis, NGO, and blood. Oh, this is getting very exciting. So hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome, also known as HFRS, could be on the cards here. Now his kidneys have gone off suddenly. Every patient on admission will get a renal function blood test, meaning that it's a new symptom. HFRS can also cause low blood pressure, which the team said he had. We know cleanliness wasn't the top priority at the patient's house, so maybe there were mice present as well. Hantavirus, which is the cause of HFRS, can be transmitted to humans via a mouse bite or from their droppings. Maybe it was inside the coffee in the cabinet. Who knows? Diagnosis would be with a blood antibody test and treatment would be with an antivirus like ribavirin, although no specific treatment is available and many patients end up needing ventilation. I suspect that might be where he's headed next. Would be insane if that's the diagnosis. And there she is. Joy, cry. <sighs> That's the sound we'd like to hear. Whatever he has, she has too. She's sleepwalking. Yeah, the baby lives. I told you that was the right decision. Seems like the patient agreed to let Cuddy keep her as well as many patients after the baby is born actually change their mind and they feel too attached to the baby to let them go. That's especially true with surrogacy. There was actually a case in the UK of a 26 year old woman named Leanne Stanford who agreed to being a surrogate for, wait for it, her mom and stepdad. I mean, it didn't start off very well, did it? That was after she agreed to being a surrogate on the day of her mother's miscarriage of her previous pregnancy. In the UK, surrogacy agreements can't be upheld by law. And in the US, surrogacy agreements can be enforced variably depending on what state you're in. Very interesting. Whatever's killing the dad's kidneys, it's gonna kill the kids too. Is the daughter sweating blood? It narrows it down to any one of a dozen genetic disorders, each of which takes more than a week to run. Call Foreman, get to work. Interesting, so this sweating blood from the skin is actually called hematohydrosis. In the real world, there's actually no known genetic cause for this and very little is known about it. Some theories say that it can be a manifestation of something called vicarious menstruation, where menstrual blood can leave from where it's not supposed to, i.e. the skin. Although that probably isn't the case here unless the dad is actually the mom, which would be a whole other story. Another theory I have is 
what if they have a von Hippolindau and the bleeding is actually tiny hemangioblastomas all over the skin and in the kidneys leading to the kidney failure. That would be very spicy. Also, infection is still possible with hantavirus, even though the team said they ruled out infection though, somehow. I guess it makes it more interesting, but it's actually very tough to rule out infection 100%. I actually wouldn't trust anyone who's 100% sure about anything, to be honest. Now, I also don't know how they've ruled out infection because they haven't done an HIV test, so that could be suppressing an immune response if one's there. Adoption's a cheat, remember? I've just given you the answer, haven't I? Your real name. Hamoud. You and your daughter have familial Mediterranean fever. Start them on colchicine and melphalan. Oh my days, House really pulled that one deep out of the bag. Familiar Mediterranean fever is a genetic autoimmune condition that's found in Arabs and one that can cause fever, joint pain, rashes, muscle pain, or in rare cases, anhedonia, which is where they don't experience pleasure from previously enjoyed activities. It's due to a mutation in the MEFV gene, which codes for a protein called pyrin that regulates inflammation in the body. The treatment is with colchicine, which battles excessive inflammation, but Colchicine can cause severe diarrhea as a side effect. How save their kidneys and their lives with that one? As an Arab myself, I'm feeling pretty hot under the collar now. Question for you smart people. What was the first civilization in the world and which modern country is a direct descendant of it? Drop your answer down below. Feeling better? <laughs> when I saw you hold her and the look on your face, I can't. Becca, don't do this. Oh, that is brutal. It's Leanne Stanford all over again. How can Cuddy recover from a blow like that? To be handed a baby, told she's yours, and then take it back? As someone who's going to be a dad in about four days, I can't even imagine that pain. The worst thing is what made that patient want the child is seeing how happy Cuddy was when she held her for the first time, saying it was the most beautiful thing she's seen and that she wants that for herself. That's the type of wound that takes more than a line of coke to fix. Incredible episode, nine out of 10 for entertainment, 8 out of 10 accuracy, 9.5 out of 10 for diagnosis. It's really not the greatest time for gloating. I can't go through that again. You made a great mother. Oh, house, I am disappointed in you. First you said she was gonna be a terrible mother when she was getting a baby. Now she's lost it, you say that she would be a great mother, and then you take advantage of her vulnerability. You complex negating genius asshole anti-hero. You're negating her feelings because you can't find joy in your own life and you want to level the playing field by sapping the joy out of hers. Oh, brutal, but so good to watch. Now it's my turn to diagnose you. Seems like you've got a house reaction deficiency. Oh look, the cure is popping up right there. Go on, treat yourself. Stay curious. 